Bonjour, it is from the canals of the beautiful medieval city of Utrecht in the Netherlands that I welcome you to Tesla Tour 2015. I am Gabriel Gatte. What a great place to start this three weeks gourmet celebration of the amazing regional food of the 21 stages of the Tour de France. This tour is very exciting for cheese lovers. We will find out the secrets of the iconic Roquefort and the big tasty Beaufort. This voyage confirms to me that the art of French pâtisserie has reached new heights. We'll enter the magic world of great modern chefs that create dishes of admirable finesse. From my youth, I inherited a weakness for loving charcuterie, and 2015 must be the year of the jambon. Of course, I will toast the art of French living with the occasional glass of wine, apple cider, boutique beer, and champagne. The landscapes of so many regions of my journey are so breathtakingly beautiful that I wish this tour would last three months rather than three weeks. It is a joy to have the Grand Départ from Utrecht, where the canals have been the heartbeat of this town for centuries and the most popular place to enjoy a great Dutch beer. A few steps away, the popular Saturday morning Vrendenburg Market is the oldest open-air market in the country and the place to discover the local best. The Dutch have a wonderful tradition of making great cheeses. Many of them are round, covered with wax, often made with cow's milk cheese, sometimes flavored with herbs and spices, and very often aged for a long time. This cheese is one and a half years, so much flavor, world class. The superb flavor of Gouda cheese is the highlight in these Dutch savory tarts. First, I cook half a slice onion in a little batter for a few minutes. Then I add one cup of sliced mushrooms and cook for a few more minutes before transferring to a plate. Next, I add 20 grams of batter to the saucepan and stir in 80 grams of flour for a few minutes before adding one cup of milk and cooking until it thickens. I then return the onion and mushrooms to the pan with four tablespoons of diced ham, four tablespoons of grated Gouda cheese, one tablespoon of lemon juice, a little ground pepper, and some nutmeg. This concoction smells so good. I then spoon the mixture into four pre-cooked savory pastry tartlet bases and top with thin slices of Gouda cheese. I dust with paprika before baking them in the oven for 10 minutes at 150 degrees. Voila! These Dutch Gouda and mushroom tartlets are delicious and so popular. Before leaving this charming city, I have been urged to taste the local Gouda syrup waffles. It is sweet, the flavor of butterscotch dominates. It's crispy, great market food. Tomorrow, I will taste some superb seafood in the Dutch region of Zeeland. This is the charming seaside village of Vere in the Dutch region of Zeeland. The southwest part of the Netherlands is popular with tourists that come from a long way through the canals and rivers to sample the local seafood. The cold waters of the North Atlantic are perfect for the culture of mussels and oysters, and over the last 200 years, the region has become famous for it. In the village of Yaseke, José de Cuyer farms two types of oysters that he sends to many countries throughout Europe. These extra-large oysters are packaged for the Italian market to be served grilled with breadcrumbs and garlic. The reason for my visit is to taste the outstanding and rare flat ballon oyster. 
It's very good oyster. It's the gold over here of in Europe, the Rolls Royce under the oyster, oysters. Very delicate taste. You have a very long aftertaste in it, much different than the Pacific oyster. And you, you eat them fresh, raw. That's the best way to, to eat them. I am an oyster lover. What a treat to taste them so fresh. Nearby in the village, Nolets Vistro is one of the most loved fish restaurants of the region. I have been told by chefs that the local lobster is one of the world's most delicate. It is my luck, as the short season has just started, and my plate of steam fresh crab claws, lobster and shrimps is heavenly delicious. My next course of asparagus, prepared the Dutch way, with chopped eggs and butter sauce, is also memorable. These mussels with a spicy Hollandaise sauce are a delight. I first place half a kilogram of mussels in a pot with half a sliced onion, a few sprigs of parsley, and 50 milliliters of beer. I cover with a lid and steam the mussels open. After a few minutes, I shake the pan. This helps an even steaming of the mussels. Next, I place 20 milliliters of cooking liquid and 20 milliliters of beer in a bowl over a saucepan of simmering water. I add two egg yolks and half a teaspoon of curry powder and whisk until light and fluffy. I remove the bowl from the heat and whisk in 50 grams of melted butter. I spoon a little sauce over each mussel on a half shell and place on the hot grill until golden brown. These spicy mussels au gratin are a lovely appetizer with a glass of local beer. Almost half of this region that gave its name to New Zealand is a large water delta and fish is a big part of the local diet. The most interesting traditional specialty is the cured herring fillets that are enjoyed with chopped onions as a snack in a rather unique way. There is a very strong tradition in the Netherlands to small fish like mackerel, eel, salmon and earrings. And it is used in salads, it is used in sandwich with dark bread and it is used as a nibble. Tomorrow I'm looking forward to discover the superb gastronomy of Belgium, including some fine cheeses. This is the stunning central square of the classic city of Antwerp in Belgium. It is a meeting place for food lovers to enjoy chocolate, waffle, fries, and to sample the local beer. I am visiting the Vantrich family cheese shop, which a few years ago was given the title of the best cheese shop in Europe by the Wall Street Journal. It's certainly a gourmet heaven. Frédéric buys cheeses from the best makers in Europe and refines them in state-of-the-art temperature and humidity control rooms. Naturally, he's an expert on Belgium cheeses. Not many people know that, that we have a wide selection of different cheeses in Belgium, starting from white molds to very nice artisanal goat cheeses, semi-hard abbey cheeses, but also beautiful blue cheeses, going to some delicious hard textured cheeses. And I think we in Belgium are not very often as proud as we should be on our own products. I am tempted by the Netteling farmhouse goat cheese with a gnashed rind. It is so smooth. To me, it's just so subtle in gold flavor, but just perfect. Glad it's you nice. like it. The 22 months old Grondel farmhouse cheese also has amazing flavors. It goes well with a blonde beer that a brewer and Frederick's family have created. In Belgium, we have beautiful beers and you should pair them with beautiful Belgian cheeses. And in the nose, you have the, the fruitiness. In the taste, you have a very elegant bitterness. You like it? I love it. Cheers. Cheers. Belgium is famous for making great French fries. 
First, I trim some large peeled potatoes to obtain straight edges. Then, I cut the potatoes into long 1 cm thick slices and into 1 cm sticks. Next, I very carefully drop the dry chips in hot roll at 150 degrees and cook for about 5 minutes. At this stage, the fries are almost cooked but still pale in color. The aim of the first dipping in the oil is to cook the fries without browning them. I drain them and when they are ready to serve, I fry them again in the hot oil at 190 degrees for about 4 minutes until golden. I season with salt. Voila, it is a tradition to serve these delicious Belgian fries with mayonnaise. In the French-speaking Belgian village of Marchand, Arabel Merlin is a very talented chef whose cooking is modern and groundbreaking as she avoids using many foods that people are allergic to. Mais tout le temps, ce que je veux montrer, c'est que c'est possible de cuisiner une cuisine euh, avec une très grande diminution du gluten, du lait, du sucre et en ayant une cuisine toujours aussi goûteuse. C'est ça que j'aime bien, d'aromatiser les légumes avec euh, des épices, des aromates que je, je fais beaucoup ici au jardin, pour apporter un goût particulier, faire des sauces végétales. La cuisine est superbement light, tasty et colorful. C'est un bonus que Pierre, son mari, est l'un des meilleurs sommeliers en Belgique. I will come back. Tomorrow we arrive in the north of France to discover the gourmet specialties of the town of Cambrai. The world famous crème brûlée is one of the most popular desserts in the north of France. First, I pour 200 ml of milk, 200 ml of cream in a saucepan. I add half a vanilla pod, and 20 ml of peppermint syrup and bring the mixture to the boil. Peppermint is a delicious, strong flavor, but I like to be moderate with it. In a bowl, I combine four egg yolks and 80 grams of caster sugar before mixing in the creamy mixture. I then pour this preparation into eight molds over a roasting tray and bake in the oven at 120 degrees for about 30 minutes until the center is just set. Once the creme is cold, I sprinkle a mixture of brown sugar and caster sugar on top before placing them under the grill to caramelize. These creme brulee a la menthe are a real French treat. This is the magnificent city of Amiens, home of one of the great cathedrals of France in the valley of the Somme River. Nearby the cathedral, there is a unique ensemble of several hundred floating gardens called Les Ortillonnages. These have given the town a reputation for growing outstanding vegetables and herbs. The seasonal best is sold at the atmospheric Saturday farmer's market. The quality of the root vegetables is especially good. It is the strawberry season and I am attracted by the sweet aroma. Merci beaucoup. I can never resist a panet of strawberries of that quality. They are called clary. They are sweet. They are very fruity. They smell so good. And they are so delicious. This very fertile region of Picardy is where thousands of Australians fought to liberate the village of Ville Bretonneux on the 25th of April 1918. The majestic Australian National War Memorial overlooking cereal fields honors the brave soldiers who died. The village is forever grateful to Australia and its school houses a museum depicting the life of the soldiers. Historian Maurice Denis tells me what food was cooked during the war. Celui qui habite la campagne faisait du jardin. Ah, il y avait un plat que 
c'était une purée, pommes de terre, carottes, haricots, euh, peut-être petits pois, et réchauffés à la cocotte, et croyez-moi que c'était bon. Hein. Il y avait des petites fermes avec des vaches, ce qui permettait d'avoir euh, du lait. Et pour faire de la farine, euh, l'idéal c'était d'arriver à avoir 4 ou 5 kilos de blé, de le meuler soi-même, de le tamiser, et puis de demander à la, chez le boulanger de la levure de boulanger pour faire du pain. Merci l'Australie. This modern gourmet beetroot and walnut salad is very popular in Picardy. I first cook three red and three yellow baby beetroots in boiling water, then peel and half the cold cooked beetroots. It is good to wear gloves when handling beetroot. In a bowl, I combine a little raspberry vinegar with mustard, salt, pepper, some walnut oil and mix thoroughly. I spread one tablespoon of smooth, fresh goat cheese on a plate. I top with beetroots and some walnut pieces, then drizzle the dressing on top and sprinkle with finely cut chives. This salad de betterave aux noix et fromage de chèvre is a superb entree or a light lunch. It is in the covered market of Amiens that I find a gourmet classic. Le pâté d'Amiens is a great local speciality. It's a dark terrine with goose liver pâté, pistachio and mushrooms. Tomorrow you will find me in Normandy where I will discover the great seafood of the region. This fish dish with oyster and salad sauce is amazing. First, I brush a pan with a little butter. I add one finely chopped shallot and about a cup of carrot, celery and mushrooms cut into long strips. In French, that special vegetable cut is called a julienne. Then I top with two pieces of blue eye fillet and add a quarter of a cup of apple cider. I season with salt and pepper, cover with foil and cook on low heat for 10 minutes. Next, I transfer the vegetables and fish onto two plates. Then I boil the cooking liquid down for 30 seconds before adding three tablespoons of cream and boiling until the sauce is creamy. I gently stir in six drained oysters to cook for 20 seconds. I add a little chopped parsley and spoon over the fish. This cabillaud aux huîtres sauce au cidre is a dish of haute cuisine. Normandy is one of the most charming and greenest regions of France. The attractive villages of Livaro and Pont l'Evêque are even more famous for their fromage than their beauty. The farmhouse Livaro cheese is made in only two farms, so I have chosen to visit Origen Place, Domaine saint hippolyte The Domaine also makes outstanding Pont l'Evêque and Pavé cheese. Friendly Normandy cows produce rich, leathersome and creamy milk. This is partially skinned, left unpasteurized, and set this way at 37 degrees centigrade before being cut into cubes and gently stirred by hand. Strangely, they refuse my offer to help out. The curd is then transferred into molds and turned several times before storing in temperature controlled rooms where they are salted and aged. A traditional grass is tied around the livaro before wrapping it in paper and placing it in wooden boxes. It's a treat to taste these handmade cheeses. The livaro, when you taste a cheese like that, a farmhouse cheese, you remember it because 
It is a gourmet experience, full of flavor and delicate. And to rinse it off, a beautiful cider from the region. In a nearby cheese shop, I find that the cream of Normandy has the reputation of being the world's finest for cooking and eating. Mm. It is of course creamy, slightly sour, sweet and so delicious. This super ville casserole was one of the most popular dishes of my youth. First, I stir 800 grams of cube veal with a little butter on medium heat without browning. I mix in one tablespoon of plain flour, then stir in 50 milliliters of white wine and stir for 10 seconds before adding a cup of strong clear chicken stock and half a cup of diced celery. I then season with salt and pepper, cover with foil and a lid and cook for about one hour. In France, this dish is called a blanquette because of its white, creamy color. When the veal is almost cooked, I add two carrots cut into bite-sized pieces, as well as 15 baby mushrooms and cook for a further 15 minutes. I mix half a cup of crème fraîche with one egg yolk in a bowl, then stir this into the cooking liquid to thicken it but it must not boil. After plating, I sprinkle with a little chopped parsley. This blanquette de veau au petit légume is a favorite French classic. Apart from fromage and cream, Calvados is the specialty of the region. This Chateau du Breuil has been aged for a minimum of 15 years in oak barrels, the bouquet is outstanding and the flavor is full of apples. Tomorrow I arrive in beautiful Brittany where I visit the Great Red Market and meet one of the best pâtissiers in France. This is the super medieval center of the city of Rennes, the capital of Brittany. On Saturday morning, the Marché des Lys is one of the largest and most atmospheric farmer's markets of France. It has been operating since 1622, and I am grateful to discover the local specialties with Olivier Marie, a local gourmand journalist. The mild climate of Brittany is ideal to grow the finest vegetables and it's excellent for strawberries. Olivier wants me to taste one of the popular local savory pancakes. Vin Gabriel, c'est la spécialité de Rennes, la galette saucisse. Ça doit être bon. Tu veux goûter Oui, bien sûr. Une galette saucisse, s'il vous plaît. The large but very thin pancakes are made with delicious buckwheat flour. They are cooked on special hot plates before being garnished with a plain pork sausage. Mm. I really like that. After that, I am thirsty and it's time to have a drink. Merci, mon Merci. Gan. Tu vois, Gabriel, ici, c'est la région du cidre. On n'a pas de vin. C'est le cidre breton rafraîchissant, un cidre de pays, quoi brette. Très bon. Très pétillant, très rafraîchissant. Mm. Mm. Fruité. J'aime bien. Every family in Brittany knows how to make crepe. First, I place one cup of plain flour in a bowl, making a well in the center and drop in an egg. I mix a little milk with the egg, then slowly incorporate the flour, adding more milk to obtain a smooth, creamy mixture. Then I heat some butter in the crepe pan then mix the warm batter into the crepe mixture. Next, I pour enough mixture into the pan to thinly cover the base and cook on both sides. French pancakes are always better very thin. I then spread a little jam and cream on one half of the crepe, top with strawberry slices and fold the crepe 
it tastes beautiful dusted with icing sugar. You can serve this crepe aux fraises if you invite me for dinner. Brittany has a great tradition of making delicious cakes and pastries. Rennes is blessed to have one of the best pâtisseries in France, brown by master pastry chef Laurent Le Daniel. It is a delight to visit his kitchen and to see his chefs at work, putting the final touches on this palette of little morsels that all look like masterpieces. To watch him create a chocolate flower to garnish a petit gâteau is a treat to the eye. Now I understand why he was awarded the title of one of the best pâtissiers in France as a 29-year-old. Laurent also introduced me to a little Breton cake I had never tasted before. Le parlementin, c'est une spécialité que j'ai créée euh, il y a environ une quinzaine d'années maintenant, euh, qui est composée d'un euh, petit biscuit aux amandes, d'une nougatine et d'une compotée à base de cidre. C'est délicieux. So tender the apple and the side comes through. It's très bon. Tomorrow I discover the delights of the south coast of Brittany and I visit an oyster farmer. This modern take of a scallop salad with a cauliflower puree is a delight. First, I blend some steamed cauliflower into a fine puree with a little butter, salt and pepper. I then mix the juice of half a lemon with salt, pepper, two tablespoons of olive oil, and one tablespoon of chopped roasted hazelnuts, and one teaspoon of finely cut tarragon. Next, I cook some scallops in a hot oiled pan for about 20 seconds on each side. Overcooking the scallops makes them tough and less delicate. Next, I toss the scallops in the dressing. Then, I spoon a little cauliflower puree onto plates and top with the scallops and dressing. These coquilles Saint-Jacques à la purée de chou-fleur are out of this world. It is always a pleasure to be in the Pyrenees. This is the Chateau de la Motte, a charming bed and breakfast nearby the small town of Oloron Sainte Marie. Every year, thousands of hikers pass close to the chateau as they cross the region on their way to Spain, following the path of the famous pilgrimage, the Santiago de Compostela. The pilgrims take the walk for many different reasons. Many take up the route as a retreat for their spiritual growth. So I thought I would do a little pilgrimage of my own to find out how a pilgrim can nourish himself in this stunning part of the Pyrenees. It was not long before I reached one of the many small farms that are open to visitors. Here, at La Ferme du Pessas, I am greeted by pigs, chickens and sheep. The farmer, Olivier, as a little shop where he sells farm-made used milk cheese, along with a variety of charcuteries, including jars of terrines, salami, ham, and smoked pork. My pilgrimage must continue, and happily, I have walked into the next village just at lunchtime. Here, I find lots of restaurants have affordable menus for pilgrims. La garbure bernaise is the most popular dish with the pilgrims. It's a vegetable soup with some beans, some pork meat and cabbage. Nourishing. My hunger now satisfied and back on the path, I am wishing I had a fishing rod as I cross many fast flowing torrents and rivers. My mind is wandering as I dream of recipes for wild trout and especially salmon. This delicious salmon tartare is so easy to prepare. First, 
I finely dice 100 grams of fresh salmon and place it in a bowl. I then add two tablespoons of finely diced avocado, one tablespoon of finely cut chives, half of a finely chopped shallot, two drops of Tabasco sauce, a teaspoon of finely grated lemon zest, and one tablespoon of olive oil. It is a must for all the ingredients to be very fresh. Next, I combine the ingredients very gently. I then spoon half of the tartare into a ring mold, top with half a tablespoon of salmon roux, and spread over one tablespoon of whipped crème fraîche. I garnish the top with a little more salmon roux and sprinkle with chives. This tartare de saumon looks superb and tastes even better. What better place to end my pilgrimage than at Chateau de la Motte, which was the summer residence of the local bishops for 600 years. After a great day in the Pyrenees, it's nice to relax with a glass of sweet Jurançon wine and a slice of gâteau basque garnished with almonds and custards. This is my kind of pilgrimage. Tomorrow, for my second day in the Pyrenees, I will learn about the great ham-making tradition of the region. C'est magnifique, my gourmet tour continues in the bigger region of the Pyrenees. The Relax Sunday Farmers Market of Tarbes, the largest town of the region, is the perfect place to discover the local best. The food is rustic and so natural. Le haricot tarbe named after this town is the most popular specialty of the region. Delicious in cassoulet, in soups and in salads. At the Market Café, I can't resist the taste of the jambon. It is one of the finest dry hams in Europe. It is made from a black pig breed called Porc Noir de Périgord that almost became extant 40 years ago. Now, about 50 dedicated local farmers follow very strict free-range guidelines to obtain meat of great finesse for the table and, of course, ham. I have been invited by Jean-Renan Philippe of the Salaison de la Dour to tour his family company that transformed the pig legs into the exquisite ham, Jambon Noir de Bigorre. The process starts by salting the fresh meat twice with 30 grams of salt per kilogram. And this salt is salt from Salis de Béarn, just 14 kilometers from this place. Once the salting process is finished, the ham are transported into a temperature control room to rest and be careful for several months before being dried and refined. In this place, there is a hair come from the windows here, in the front and in the back. They are drying here, but they are drying softly. They dry with the uh, hot hair from Spain, but softly with the hair from Atlantic Ocean with humid. It's very unique here. It's a place you can find nowhere in the world. This has to be one of the best ham I've ever tasted. Très bon. This upside down peach tart is one of my favorite desserts. First, I place 50 grams of batter, 120 grams of sugar, and one star anise in a skillet on medium heat and cook until it starts to brown. I remove the star anise, then neatly place a single layer of just white peach segments on top and cook for about five minutes. This dessert is more successful if the peaches are touching each other. Next, I top the peaches with a circle of puff pastry to cover them 
and ease the sides of the pastry down between the peaches and the pan. I bake the tart in the oven at 200 degrees for about 15 minutes. Then I rest it for about 10 minutes before turning it out. This tart au pêche is a delicate, fruity pleasure. Tomorrow, the feast continues in the Pyrenees as I spend the day in a farm with a cheese master. After two days in the Pyrenees, I am overjoyed with his beauty. What a thrill to be in this excellent cheese shop and restaurant with Dominique Boucher, a cheese master who looks after the maturing of a variety of French cheeses he buys from producers. These perfectly mature fromages are also available from his tracks in several of the region's markets. He likes his clients to taste the cheese before they buy them. Beaucoup de gens pensent que quand on fait du fromage avec la montagne, à la ferme, naturellement, que forcément c'est beau. I am so pleased to accompany Dominique on a cheese collecting trip to visit Jean-Noël Bellegarde, a shepherd and cheesemaker who looks after 200 magnificent ewes near the village of Arrête. Je les traite matin et soir. C'est les brebis qui produisent en général 2 litres, 2 litres de mille de lait par jour qui est destiné à la production de fromage. Et c'est un fromage qui a l'air d'être apprécié parce que je travaille encore à l'ancienne avec des méthodes ancestrales. Il faut savoir le faire. Lui, il sait le faire. Et moi, mon idée, c'est d'aller trouver les clients qui vont aimer ce qu'il fait lui. Je fabrique mon fromage encore à la main, dans le chaudron. Je fais tout le fromage sans même l'électricité. Jean-Noël makes only a few cheeses a day. And it is a privilege to see him fashion them with his large hands. The cheese is taken into the underground cave that his father built many years ago. They are salted and cared for until Dominique collects them. It's time to taste this unique cheese. Alors ça c'est vraiment important. Les gens oublient. Les gens oublient que le fromage c'est comme le vin, sans le. Et les gens le foutent de suite à la bouche, ils oublient de sentir le fromage. Ça aussi, ça fait partie de qu'est-ce que c'est qu'un fromager. Quelqu'un qui apprend, de... qu'est-ce qu'il faut avec un bon fromage Un connaisseur en face. Il faut savoir en parler. Et que franchement, c'est ça que je recherche pour le client. C'est bon, hein This lamp stew is a great French classic called Navarin. First, I brown 800 grams of lamb pieces from the shoulder in a little oil and season with salt and pepper. I make sure that the fat of the lamb has been well trimmed before the browning. Next, I add one diced onion and four sprigs of thyme and stir for two minutes before stirring in one tablespoon of flour. Next, I mix in half a cup of strong stock two diced tomatoes and two crushed garlic cloves along with some diced carrots. I cover with foil and a lid and cook in the oven for almost two hours at 140 degrees. When the meat is tender, I add some sauteed mushrooms along with one cup of cooked peas and three tablespoons of chopped parsley. This Navarin d'agneau aux champignons is a much-loved weekend feast. Tomorrow I will visit a magnificent cheese cave in the historic village of Roquefort. This is a very attractive and rugged landscape of the Aveyron in the north of the southwest region of France. 
Nestled against the rocks at an altitude of 600 meters, the historic village of Roquefort-sur-Soulzon is the home of one of the most emblematic French cheeses, the delicious Blue Roquefort. This famous fromage has been made here for more than a thousand years and must by law be exclusively refined and mature within the complex cave system under and behind the two kilometer long village. I feel privileged to visit the Papillon Roquefort Company where I meet Sébastien Leclerc, the cave master. Eh bien, le Roquefort est fabriqué à base de lait de brebis, euh, du lait cru, du mois de décembre au mois de juin. Et euh, il est affiné euh, ensuite dans les caves naturelles. Elles sont naturelles parce qu'elles sont, elles sont parcourues en fait, par de, par de l'air qui vient des fleurines, qui sont des, des failles en fait, dans la roche. Roquefort obtains its blue characteristics from a special mold that grows on ripe bread. Papillons bakes their own bread, which they leave to go moldy in the caves. This introduces the blue mold to the cheese. Donc l'affinage euh, se réalise dans les caves naturelles, donc sur planches de bois, euh, pendant deux à trois semaines. Once the blue mold has appeared, the cheeses are wrapped in tin foil and matured very slowly for between three to twelve months. This roquefort looks so perfect. It is the result of a thousand years of savoir-faire. It's a privilege to taste it where it's made. Tu peux me dire quelques mots sur ce roquefort Oui, donc euh, c'est un fromage plutôt jeune, un roquefort plutôt jeune de 3 mois à 4 mois d'âge. Et euh, il est assez rond en bouche, il est bien beurré. Je l'adore. Je l'aime aussi. The full flavor of Roquefort cheese is brought to life in this creamy celeriac soup. First, I cook about half a kilo of large celeriac cubes and two diced potatoes in boiling salted water until soft. Then, I place the drained cooked vegetables in the pan with two cups of milk and one tablespoon of butter over medium heat. Then stir in 150 grams of Roquefort cheese until melted. The warming Roquefort releases appetizing aromas. I next season with pepper and blend the soup until creamy. Just before serving, I sprinkle this delicious velouté de céleri rave au Roquefort with snip chives. Rodez, the capital of the region, is home to the outstanding contemporary Soulage Museum and a superb cathedral. Almost every shop offers regional specialties. I enter the shop of Monsieur Théron, a well-known butcher and small good maker. This is one of the biggest ham I've ever seen, 22 kilos. It is a tradition in this region to make a ham out of a sow. Mm. Now I understand why they love it. It's great. Tomorrow I will discover the magnificent Lozère region and its gourmet specialities. This is one of the most beautiful parts of France, La Lozère, at the north of the Languedoc-Roussillon region. The landscape is immensely varied and high on the plateaus is the home of the superb breed of Aubrac beef that is famous for the quality of its meats and for providing the milk used in the making of tasty cheeses. Every Saturday morning in the Cathedral Square of Mont, there is a charming farmer's market. This farmer's farm is in the mountain and with him to the market he brings some live rabbits, some potatoes that are very popular in the region, a selection of jam made with his fruits, some mushrooms that he has dried from the mountain, some herbs and some of his own eggs, so it is fabulous. Near the cathedral is an attractive shop run by Françoise Bonal, a third generation butcher and small goods maker. Françoise's pork sausage with cabbage is a local prize winner. 
I am very impressed with the high quality of the meat. The lamb looks so sweet and tender, and the beef from the Aubrac Charolais breed, outstanding. Donc, euh, je vous présente la pièce de bœuf par excellence du boucher, c'est la côte de bœuf. C'est une viande super tendre, avec des fibres courtes et euh, très maigre. Donc, on aperçoit peu de gras et avec une couleur euh, rouge écarlate qui ressort, euh, qui re ressort une viande très tendre. This hearty beef casserole with olives is ideal for winter dinner party. First, I place four slices of roasted blade beef in a bowl with one sliced onion, one sliced carrot, two crushed pieces of garlic, a few sprigs of thyme, two cloves, one tablespoon of perno, and half a cup of a big red wine. I cover with plastic film and marinate overnight. After this time, I then place two tablespoons of flour in an oven-proof pot, stir in the marinade, the vegetables, and the beef, before adding half a cup of strong stock, covering with foil, the lid, and cooking in the oven at 120 degrees. To obtain tenderness, I cook the beef for three hours. I then add three sliced anchovies, 20 black olives, and two globes of fennel cut into segments. Cover again and cook for 30 minutes or until tender. It is traditional to serve it sprinkled with parsley. This paleron de bœuf aux olives is an ideal match with a Shiraz. Back at the market, I enjoy witnessing local chef Hugo de Oliviera making aligo, the famous regional dish. Aligo is made with mashed potato combined with a local young cheese cut into pieces. Hugo invites me to prepare the big batch for the locals. And I can't wait to taste it. Mm. Now this is delicious. It is delicate, it's not too strong, it's just perfect. Merci Hugo. Tomorrow we are in the Ardèche where we discover the great chestnut specialties of the region. This chocolate cream with glacé chestnut and raspberries is to die for. First, I heat 60 milliliters of milk and 80 milliliters of cream in a saucepan. I pour the preparation over 100 grams of the super Valrona cooking chocolate and stir until very smooth. It is a chocolate used by many of the world's top chefs. Next, I pour the chocolate cream into four molds. I top with five small pieces of glassy chestnuts and allow to cool. I fill the cavity of some raspberries with a little raspberry jam and dust with icing sugar. Just before serving, I decorate the chocolate preparation with the raspberries and a whole glacé chestnut. This crème au chocolat et marron glacé aux framboises is simply too good. This is one of the most magnificent sections of the mighty Rhone River, south of Lyon and north of Avignon. On the left bank of the river, the town of Valence is almost at the doorway of Provence. The climate is Mediterranean and the weekly farmer's market is a window on the regional specialties. This farmer produces their own olive oil as well as their wine. They sell their eggs at the market their asparagus, their strawberries, but they also have the goat cheese of their neighbors that they sell here. It is not lunchtime yet, but the aromas of this rotisserie, where free ranch chickens, pork, and a selection of poultry are roasting, is teasing me. The knife sharpener is still working the old fashioned way. I have planned to sample a Rhone Valley wine at the Bistro des Clairs. The vineyards of the Rhone Valley are magnificent and they produce the best Shiraz in France. And this Papillon Cros Hermitage 
is a great example. It's a full body wine, well balanced, fruity. I love it. This luscious nougat ice cream with almond is a much loved French dessert. First, I place 60 grams of almonds cut into pieces and 30 grams of pistachios in a pan to lightly toast them. I sprinkle one tablespoon of sugar and stir for a couple of minutes to caramelize the nuts before transferring onto a tray. This is a very easy way to caramelize the nuts, but it must not burn. Next, I slowly pour 50 grams of boiling honey over two firmly beaten egg whites, then beat until it's almost cold. I beat two egg yolks with 20 grams of sugar and I fold it into the beaten egg whites. I then fold in 100 ml of whipped cream, 3 tablespoons of diced glassy fruits and 3 quarters of the nuts. I carefully pipe this preparation into 6 small molds lined with plastic film and cover before placing them in the freezer for at least 10 hours. I serve this nougat glacé à la pistache with a raspberry coulis and garnish it with caramelized nuts and a glacé cherry. Yum! Valence is the home of one of the most acclaimed family restaurants in France, the 100-year-old La Maison Pic. Acclaimed chef and owner Anne-Sophie Pic was elected best female chef in the world in 2011. A contemporary cooking is sublime and unique, light, elegant, and so delicious. The chefs are a pleasure to watch in a brand new white kitchen. And Sophie has created new appetizing ways with vegetables while keeping their pure flavors. This perfectly cooked pigeon dish is a masterclass in cooking. Her desserts are an exotic gourmet experience and unlike any other. This meal is one of the most memorable of my life. This job is so tough. Tomorrow I am at the foot of the Alps in the north of Provence to visit a family that makes a flavorsome banongo cheese. The region of the north of Provence and the foot of the Alps is one of the most popular tourist summer destinations. There are many ancient hilltop villages to visit, some with extraordinary views and places to stay. Here you can eat in rustic and peaceful surroundings. I am enjoying my visit to the Provencal farmer's market of Dim les Bains. The asparagus is at its best, and the local cook prepares soca, a chickpea flour pancake that is a favorite snack. Olive oil is used in this local cuisine and olives are added to many dishes. I am here to meet Aurélie Garcin, who sells a superb variety of their farmhouse goat cheese, including one of my favorite little cheeses called Banon. I am curious to find out how it's made and I'm invited to visit their family farm. Aurélie and her husband Mathieu milk their beautiful goats morning and evening. It is fascinating to watch them at work in this rustic barn. Le banon est un fromage que l'on fait avec du lait cru de chèvre de race alpine. Mathieu's dad is the cheesemaker and starts the process within an hour of milking by adding some rennet to the warm milk. This helps the separation of the curd and the whey. After cutting the curd into small pieces, the fresh cheese is placed in special molds to drain and then turn over several times to remove the excess whey. Once unmolded, the cheese is mature for about 10 days before Mathieu's mom, Noel, skillfully wraps each banon in several chestnut leaves and ties it neatly together. And we leave it 
euh, une dizaine de jours dans ces feuilles de châtaignier pour donner une petite couleur mort dorée euh, et un goût particulier et typique euh, au fromage de banan. I cannot imagine a more appropriate place to taste this iconic baby cheese. Le banan est très goûteux. It's really a very flavorsome cheese. It is so delicious. It's a great cheese. On en mange énormément. <laughs> this Provençal chicken and capsicum casserole with olives is a local family favorite. First, I brown eight chicken drumsticks in a little olive oil with 12 baby potatoes. Then stir in two tablespoons of fresh rosemary and one diced onion and a little salt and pepper and cook for a few minutes. I then transferred the preparation to an oven dish to bake in the oven at 180 degrees for about 20 minutes. Next, I drop three sliced capsicums in the pan and cook slowly for 20 minutes. For a contrast of textures and flavors, I like to use capsicums of different colors. I mix the cooked chicken and potatoes with the capsicums and garnish with black olives. This poulet au poivron et olives is very appetizing and my family loves it. Tomorrow, I am in the Savoy region visiting a stunning vineyard that produces some super breads. Big trout with Gruyere cheese is a specialty of the Savoy region. I first place two trouts in a battered oven dish and brush the fish with soft butter. I pour 50 milliliters of dry white wine over the fish and place in an oven at 150 degrees for five minutes. In a bowl, I beat one egg with 50 milliliters of crème fraîche and a little salt and pepper. If I don't have crème fraîche, I use sour cream or a little bit of cream with lemon juice. Next, I pour this over the trout and sprinkle with a light coating of grated gruyere and finish cooking the trout in the oven for about 15 minutes. These treat à la Savoyard are a simple alpine pleasure. This is a stunning alpine region of Savoie around the famous town of Saint-Jean-de-Maurienne. The small alpine village of saint al is surrounded by rich green pastures where lovely Tarentaise cows are feasting. These cows belong to Jean-Pierre Cartier, whose village farm produces the magnificent tasty Beaufort cheese. His cheesemaker, Fabrice, uses 500 liters of milk per cheese. Once the whey and curd are separated and cut into rice grain size, it is slowly heated until it reaches the right texture. The cheeses are molded in large beechwood rings lined with cloth and pressed to extract the moisture. A label of identification is attached to the side. After turning the cheese several times over two days, the big wheel is salted in a brine overnight. From then on, the 45 kilo cheese stays in cool moist caves to mature under the village where it's refined and cared for with regular brushing and turning for at least six months and up to two years. The result is an outstanding cheese that I have been looking forward to tasting so much. It is a cheese that has got um, beautiful flavors of the grass from, from the mountain. It's just so delicious. This omelette with Beaufort cheese is one of the most popular regional dishes. I first cook a diced potato in a little batter in a frying pan. Next, I place three eggs in a bowl with one tablespoon of crème fraîche and 20 grams of shaved Beaufort cheese. Then a little pepper and salt before beating together with a fork. This omelette only needs to be beaten for about 15 seconds. 
Then I heat a little butter in a frying pan and cook the omelette on high heat until it's almost set. I fill the center with the potato and one tablespoon of mixed chives and tarragon. I fold the omelette and slide it onto a plate. It is more appetizing garnished with extra cheese and a sprinkle of chives. Voila, a very easy but very satisfying omelette au beaufort from the Alps. The family of Pinel has been making the most recognizable French pocket knives in this part of the Alps for over 125 years. The Opinel knife is a French icon. Jacques Opinel manages the Family Knife Museum. C'est un couteau tout simple puisqu'il est robuste, efficace, avec un manche en bois dur et une lame en acier de très haute qualité. Et la particularité, depuis 1955, on a inventé la virole tournante le, qui sert de sécurité pour bloquer la lame en position fermée, mais surtout en position ouverte. The popularity of this clever knife continues with new colorful and very attractive models being created to suit our time. They are nice for handy people, gardeners, and of course, cooks. I especially like the kit that encourages children to take part in the family cooking. Tomorrow I am in the iconic Alpenves region to enjoy more alpine specialties. This blueberry mousse is an outstanding modern alpine dessert. In a pan, I first place the juice of one lemon with 100 grams of sugar and half a vanilla pod before adding 400 grams of blueberries to simmer for five minutes. Next, I press half of the blueberries through a fine strainer and whisk 10 grams of gelatin into the warm puree. The amazing color and flavor comes from the skin of the berries. I beat two egg whites with a pinch of cream of tartare into stiff peaks, then fold in 50 grams of sugar. I gently mix 100 milliliters of whipped cream into the cool blueberry puree and fold in the egg whites. Next, I carefully pipe a little of the mousse into six glasses and refrigerate for at least six hours to set. Just before serving, I top each mousse with the remaining blueberry compote. This very light mousse au myrtille is delicious served with macarons. This is the beautiful Grand Cascade, one of my favorite romantic Parisian restaurants. It is always a joy for me to rediscover Paris. The Patisserie des Rêves is a special destination for French pastry lovers. Philippe Conticini, one of the leaders of the revolution of French patisserie, has spent years modernizing traditional French gâteaux like the Millefeuille and the Saint-Honoré. His Paris-Brest was voted the best in Paris. Ma, ma façon de de faire les choses, c'est de pouvoir toucher les gens. J'ai revisité tous les classiques en 2009. J'ai tellement travaillé dessus, mais tellement, ça m'a pris tellement de temps, au travers de la structure, de l'eau, de l'air, de l'humidité, que ces classiques étaient les gâteaux les plus créatifs que j'ai fait dans ma vie. Philippe would like me to test his stunning vanilla and red fruit charlotte, a complex structure of vanilla mousse, fruit jelly and raspberry compote trapped in a light sponge biscuit. Là, pour le coup, on a un vrai contraste de, de, de texture, de sensation, et on a une émotion fruitée, mais très très longue en bouche, et très adoucie par la bavaroise à la vanille. The magic is the mix of the vanilla with the raspberry that makes the flavor of the raspberry last so long. C'est très bon. Thank you. The street markets of Paris are looking better and better, and the new season cherries are irresistible, and they are sweet. 
This appetizing cherry and almond tart was traditionally made with cherries grown just outside Paris. I first mix two eggs with 50 grams of caster sugar, then add 50 ml of cream, 60 grams of soft butter, 100 grams of almond meal, and whisk well. Next, I line a greased tart mold with a thin layer of sweet pastry and spread the almond cream over the pastry shell. I like to garnish the top generously with juicy pitted cherries. If you don't have a cherry pitter, use unpitted cherries, but make sure you tell everybody about the stones. I bake the tart in a preheated oven at 180 degrees until the base is cooked. It looks great dusted with icing sugar. Voilà, the delicious tart Amandine, aux cerises de Paris. Paris by night is fabulous. A dining cruise on the River Seine is one of the best ways to experience the magic of the city of lights. As a young chef, I worked only a few steps away from the stunning Place de la Concorde, where the Champs Elysees leads to the Arc de Triomphe the iconic finish of the Tour de France. It has been a privilege for me to present Tesla Tour 2015 from so many stunning French regions, but also from Belgium and the Netherlands. What a pleasure to sample so many outstanding cheeses, charcuteries, seafoods, and of course, great beer, fruity ciders, and fine wines. It was a special joy to meet creative chefs and pastry cooks that take the art of French cooking to new dimensions with so many wonderful dishes. Until next year, merci et au revoir.